everyone, Amy Bowser Tennant here, the Genealogy Reporter, and today is another episode of Genealogy Tip Tuesday. And today we're going to be talking about U.S. border crossing records. As you know, the United States borders Canada to the north and Mexico to the south. And a lot of our ancestors crossed over these borders and records were created. Unfortunately, you're probably not going to find any border crossings prior to 1895. Um, Canada started recording their border crossings about 1895, and Mexico didn't really start keeping records until 1906. But if you're fortunate enough to find your ancestors on one of these border crossings or manifest cards, you will likely find a lot of great genealogical information full name, birth date, birthplace, um, their age, maybe an address of where they last lived, uh, parents' names, possibly occupation, and maybe even a physical description or a picture, which would be really cool. Now, the Mexican border records, um, they can be searched for free at familysearch.org, but it's only an index version. So if you want to see the original, you will need to go to Ancestry to do that. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to the collection at Family Search that you can search for free and a link to the record collection at Ancestry. I found this really interesting. Um, in 1906 and in 1907, uh, a large group of Syrians and Japanese crossed the Mexican border at Eagle Pass, Texas. So keep in mind that it wasn't only um, Mexicans and Americans crossing that border. A lot of people found it easier to you know, come into Mexico and then cross the border into the United States. The same is true with the Canadian crossings. The Canadian border crossing list is sometimes called St. Albans list. And it's kind of the better known term actually. But these border crossing records can also be found on familysearch.org for free, but it's an index only. So you're only getting, you know, uh, this much information. But at Ancestry, you can find the original documents. And there again, original documents may hold names of other family members, the full name of the person um, who is traveling, why they're traveling, who they're going to see, um, their final destination, their birthplace, their birth uh, date, lots of different things. So you definitely want to take a look at these records. So I, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to to the Canadian border crossing records that you can find at Family Search, which is, are for free, and also the one that you can search at Ancestry. Remember, if you do not have a subscription to Ancestry, go to your local library if they're open and use the uh, Ancestry account that many public libraries offer. Or you can go to a local family history center if they are open. Now, before we end, I want to take a look at two really awesome examples of border crossing records and what you can find. And I'll show you the difference between an indexed version and a digital version. So first we're going to look at this border crossing from Canada to the United States. And this is what I found at Family Search for John Charles McGrinder. <clears throat> We've got the fact that the event of immigration took place on the 28th of December, 1929. This uh, male was Irish. There was no photograph included. His birth date was 20 July, 1848. It mentions that he was from North Ireland, which is where he was born. There's an arrival contact name, Daniel McCullough, FD stands for friend, uh, departure contact name, Michael McT. 
Friender, and B stands for brother, probably it should be McGrinder, but we don't know because we can't see the original. But if we pop over again to Ancestry, we find the original record. We find his birthplace on this record. We've got that his most recent place of residence was Canada, actually in Toronto, and that he's headed to New York, New York. It mentions that his friend Daniel McCullough lives at a certain address in New York, and that's where he's headed, but that he's being seen off by his brother, Michael McGrinder, and Michael is also of Toronto. I think it's interesting, too, at the very bottom there, you'll see that, that John originally came to Canada through Halifax on March 28th, 1925. So if you had, this had been your ancestor and you'd been searching for how he came to the United States and you'd been just searching the ports of arrival in the US, you never would have realized he actually came through and landed in Halifax in 1925 and then a few years later came through Canada border crossing to the United States directly to New York, New York. So you can see that these records can be very valuable. And if you use them in combination with Family Search to help you with the, getting the record to begin with, the index version, and then you go to Ancestry and find the original, they can be very helpful to your family history research. Thanks for joining us today on Genealogy Tip Tuesday. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We need you. Can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye.